Last night was the vice presidential debate between J.D. Vance and Tim Walls, and essentially millions of Americans watched J.D. Vance get walloped in this debate by Governor Tim Walls. In my personal opinion, Vance came off as this very slimy, snake oil salesman kind of figure, whereas Tim Walls came off as a very genuine, caring, and passionate person when it comes to the issues. And that translated into how voters are viewing it. The majority of polls today are showing either a tie in the debate or Tim Walls winning. But there were some particular moments in this debate which were incredibly embarrassing for J.D. Vance and the Trump campaign, and the Harris campaign is already taking advantage of these moments. So I'm gonna show you a couple of them. We'll talk about it a little bit, but let's just dive right in. So I have two moments to show you. Here's the first one, which has gone incredibly viral on social media. J.D. Vance started crying and complaining to the moderators when they fact-checked him about his lies surrounding Haitian immigrants in Ohio. This is something that him and Donald Trump have been pushing very heavily. And when the moderators said, hey, this is not true, J.D. Vance snapped, started yelling at them. Just take a look at this clip. Thank you, Governor. And just to clarify for our viewers, Springfield, Ohio does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status, right. temporary protected status. Well, Mar Mar Nora, Margaret, but, but thank you, Senator. We have no, no, so course. much to get to. Margaret, thank I, you, I think Nora. it's important we're because we're going to turn out of the, the debate, economy. Thank Margaret, you, Margaret. The, the, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't going to fact check. And <laughs> did you? Oh my God! So did you hear that? I mean, he. Wow, he's. These moderators put in a very simple fact check saying like, hey, these folks that we're talking about in this debate are actually in Springfield, Ohio, legally. These are legal migrants in the United States who have gone through a legal process to get here. J.D. Vance and Donald Trump continue to lie about these people saying that that's not true. And the moderators, to protect these people, by the way, who, who've been targeted by Trump supporters, the moderators have this very simple fact check saying, no, they're, they're actually here legally. The people that J.D. Vance just lied about, they're actually here legally. And J.D. Vance complains to them saying that the rules were that you weren't going to fact check me. <laughs> so, you know, J.D. Vance is acknowledging like, hey, I, I thought that I could just get up here and lie. I thought I could get up here and basically say anything about any group of people and get away with it. But not so fast, JD, not so fast. It's so funny that he's complaining about getting fact-checked. This is the entire Trump campaign. Trump also recently pulled out of his 60 Minutes interview, which is an interview that the network, or the, the show, I should say, does with every presidential candidate in every single le election for more than half a century. They sit down with both the Democrat and the Republican. This year, it's only going to be Kamala Harris. Trump pulled out and, and backed out of this interview because they informed him that he'd be fact-checked during the interview. Is that not remarkably uh, uh, insane? I mean, ridiculous from a presidential candidate? They don't want to be fact-checked, and J.D. Vance does the same thing, getting upset over being fact-checked, crying to the moderators? It's like, you know, um, a sore loser in a, in a game, like saying, ref, ref, please, like, come to my assistance. What a joke J.D. Vance is. I mean, truly an embarrassing moment. And as I said, this has gotten hundreds of millions of views across uh, different social media platforms. So a really bad moment for J.D. Vance. Now, the second clip I want to show you is probably the moment that we've all seen the most, which is when Tim Walls asked J.D. Vance, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? And I'm showing you this because after I'm going to show you a way in which the Harris campaign has already started to take advantage of this comment from J.D. Vance. So let's take a look at the clip first. Billy, just say he is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor wow. Americans wow, from wow, speaking wow. their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to, that is a damning non-answer. Has she? It's a damning non-answer for you to not talk about censorship. Look at him. What, what, what a weasel. This guy's such a weasel. What, Kamala, apparently somehow J.D. Vance thinks that Kamala Harris censored Americans from talking about the pandemic? What? He's just making stuff up. He just got backed into a corner right there. Uh, by, by Tim Walls. He had no answer, so he just has to put it on Kamala Harris, make something up on the spot saying, did Kamala Harris <laughs> censor people after COVID? What on earth is this lunatic talk about, talking about? But now, as I mentioned, the Harris campaign has already taken advantage of this. We saw it last night. We all gasped when we saw it because what a ridiculous, as Tim Walls said, non-answer, complete non-answer from J.D. Vance. But the Harris campaign today released a campaign ad featuring these words. 
from J.D. Vance. Just take a look. It's remarkable. It's really rich for Democratic leaders to say that Donald Trump is a unique threat to democracy when he peacefully gave over power. He is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. That is a damning non-answer. America, I think you've got a really clear choice of who's going to honor that democracy and who's going to honor Donald Trump. Boom. Mm, I love that. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. You know, quick turnaround time here. Less than 24 hours after J.D. Vance said this, bam, this ad is on social media. It's all over the country. You might have seen it on TV. Uh, it's on social media. It's spreading like wildfire. Uh, because what a what an insane comment from J.D. Vance, not only the whole, well, I'm focused on the future, kind of dodging the question that Tim Walls asked him, but also the Donald Trump peacefully gave over power. Really? He's just trying to gaslight the American people. That's what it is. That's what the entire Trump campaign is, hoping that you at home forget what Donald Trump did, what he said, what he continues to say, hoping that you just ignore all of that and pretend it didn't exist, hoping that you forget about January 6th and the lead up to January 6th and Donald Trump's role in January 6th. That's what J.D. Vance tried to do on the debate stage last night. That's what Trump continues to do, trying to make us forget about what we, with our own eyes, witnessed and the dangers that are threatening us and our democracy. And the Harris campaign saying no. No, no, not at all. And they're using campaign ads against J.D. Vance and Donald Trump. I imagine that last night when, you know, the, the Trump campaign saw J.D. Vance say something like this, they knew it was coming. They all probably collectively facepalmed like, oh, my God, what a terrible moment for J.D. Vance. Tim Walls really put him on the spot there perfectly, almost masterfully in, in a debate sense. And J.D. Vance panicked. And now that ad is great and it's all over the place. I love it. So overall, I'd say the debate was a complete failure for the Trump campaign. You know, it kind of answers the question as to why Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have refused to debate thus far. Like even getting a VP debate scheduled was incredibly difficult. J.D. Vance for a long time was saying, well, you know, maybe it'll happen. Maybe I'll do it. I don't know. And Donald Trump, of course, stepped on the debate stage with Kamala Harris once got his clock cleaned, and is now saying that he won't do it again because it's too close to the election and voting has already started. Kind of really uh, silly excuses given the fact that he debated around the exact same time last election cycle, but you know, uh, they're cowards over there at the Trump campaign. Uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are willing to have these conversations in front of the American people and be open about these conversations, and uh, Trump and J.D. and J.D. Vance are not. They're willing, they want to hide away, hide their views, hoping that you don't research their views, hoping you don't like dig into who they are and what they've said and what they want to do. Um, and hopefully in their view, they cruise toward the election. That's what they want to do. They're playing a hide and seek campaign, whereas Kamala Harris is actually out there saying, hey, I want to represent you. I want your vote. I don't want to just hopefully get your vote. I want to get your vote. There's a difference here in the campaigns. Kamala Harris has a really great campaign with really competent people, with people who care about America. J.D. Vance and Donald Trump, not so much. Not so much. They have a campaign that cares about Trump and J.D., but nobody else. Nobody else. So anyway, I just wanted to show you these moments from the debate last night if you hadn't already seen them. And of course, that new Kamala Harris ad, which is so fantastic. Make sure to share that ad with everybody you know. Um, hopefully more people see it. Uh, more than I've, al I've already seen it. But I will leave the video there. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below. It goes an incredibly long way. Also drop a like on the video and comment. Let me know what you think about all this stuff. And as I always say, I greatly appreciate you and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.